The Secret Life of Water by Masaru Emoto. It's an actual print book. Translated by David A. Thane. It's an Atria paperback. The universe, silence, a world stretching into all eternity. They came here from far away, hundreds and thousands of clumps of ice, moving through outer space. After a long journey through the expanse between planets and stars, the grand journey is about to come to an end. The earth, emerald green, shining brightly. As the ice approaches Earth, it enters the atmosphere and begins to break up, gradually becoming smaller, spreading out, and then finally falling to the ground. Clouds, ornaments in the sky, art evolving moment by moment. When the ice granules fall to a certain point, they become a fine curtain of mist and spread out in the sky, creating a white carpet above the Earth. A cloud is born. Rain, ice granules falling down on plants, gently providing moisture. Rain falls, bringing nourishment to the earth, forest fields flowers. The water sinks into the ground, only to emerge ages later as spring water. River, splashing, sparkling, flowing magnificently. At first a muddy stream, the water eventually becomes a river flowing through the meadows, waterways carrying life within. Sandy beach, blue sky, sparkling ocean reflecting the sun, white waves. Eons ago, this is where it all began. The ocean gave birth to life and life emerged on land, creating a new day, the birth of bustling culture. <clears throat> Morning mist, droplets flowing down the veins of green leaves. Water in its most pure and beautiful form rises up in the cool air of the forest morning, creating a mist. Beside the water well, nice and cool, the laughing of children. The children share a watermelon. Plants take their moisture from the ground, providing us with sweet fruit. Water from the well is cold and delicious. Industry, chimneys, black smoke, discarded plastic bottles. Somewhere along the way, we have forgotten how to show our appreciation for water. Water from the ground is polluted and water from our taps no longer tastes good, so we resort to water in plastic bottles. A new century, a new war, hope and despair. Perhaps the pollution of water is nothing more than the pollution of the human soul. Modern society has gone as far as we can go. What is to come of us now? Ice crystals, shining diamonds, a new hope, the beginning of a new adventure. Contents. Introduction. Page 1. Chapter 1. Tune in to the halo of happiness. Page 13. Chapter 2, Water's Healing Melody, page 39. Chapter 3, Cycles of Water, Cycles of Life, page 67. Chapter 4, The Wonder of Hado, Explaining the Inexplicable, page 117. Chapter 5, Our World and Our Water Are Changed by Prayer, page 143. Epilogue, page 173. <clears throat> Introduction. Starting with my first collection of water crystal photographs, messages from water, Mizu Kara no Dengen, Vibration Kiyoi Ikusha, 1999, I have come to realize that these water books have a strange and wonderful power. They have wings of their own and go beyond my own familiar boundaries to distant lands where they have an enormous impact. They force people to experience a different way of seeing things and I am often invited to speak to the people who have been touched by these books. I sometimes feel like I'm being guided by the spirit of water. I feel like I can see and even talk to this spirit, which I see as water droplets shining brightly in the air. The droplets join together to form clouds, disappearing just as fast, all for my entertainment. Even though I now feel like I am being guided by the spirit of water, my first conscious interaction with water was not at all pleasant. In Yokohama, <clears throat> Japan, where I grew up, my family lived on a plateau near the ocean. It was only a short walk down a slope to the water's edge. When the tide went out, the shallow shore was left uncovered for miles, making it a great place to hunt for various types of clams. But at high tide, the scene was completely different. 
I must have been six or seven when the sea swallowed me up one day. I had gone out swimming with the boy next door, who was two years older than I. We had gone out further than we should have, and I suddenly began bobbing up and down, gasping for air. It was the first time I had experienced anything like it. I was only ten meters from land, but my feet didn't touch the bottom. I panicked and started waving my arms and kicking my feet, but the more I panicked, the more I sunk, and soon I started to swallow water. I thought that was going to be the end of me, but a small boat approached and pulled me out of the water. When I went home and told my mother what had happened, she gave me some advice based on her own ability to swim and her understanding of water. You can float if you just give in, she said. She told me that if I let the water lift me instead of trying to resist it, it would pick me up and carry me. These words have stuck with me over the years. Since that time, I have tried to let myself go with the flow as I gently move in the direction that I wish my life to take me. Now whenever I go swimming in the ocean or a pool, I like to just lie on my back and let myself be carried in the arms of water. And it's times like that more than any other that I feel the presence of the spirit of water in the form of shining droplets. I feel quite confident in saying that the reason I came up with the idea of freezing water and taking photographs of the crystals was that I desired to go with the flow of life. The spirit of water came to my aid, guiding me to live the life that I now live. The spirit has led me and guided me over the years, teaching me the many things I need to know, culminating in the publication of my book, The Hidden Messages in Water. Shortly after its publication, readers began sending me letters of appreciation. Their kind words have helped to create a wonderful flow for me to give myself up to. Most of the letters expressed appreciation and also amazement in seeing the truth of nature revealed through water crystals. One woman wrote, Of all the books that I have read in my life, this is the most wonderful. Thank you so much for this book. It's as if it were surrounded by light. I will treasure it for the rest of my life. Another message read, To see truth revealed in such a visible way is truly surprising, amazing, and convincing. This book made me realize that the effects brought about by ancient teachings, prayer, and religion are not simply superstitions and random ideas, but effects based on the truths of the universe. Another wrote, My 76-year-old father told me, Of all the books people have recommended to me, this is the only one I'm glad I read. Thank you for this book that has changed my perspective on life. In fact, if we were to take the energy from all these messages and make a crystal, I am certain that it would be a beautiful one. This is the work of the water crystals. I find that those who are, tra who are attracted by the beauty of crystals become connected and then they resonate with each other. Like when a single leaf falls onto the surface of water, a quiet and soft but certain wave is spreading out as a result of water's secret life being revealed to mankind. The response has been the same all over the world. I have met with people from Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Holland, England, France, Italy, America, Canada, Costa Rica, Uruguay, Ecuador, Brazil, Australia, South Korea, the Philippines, and Taiwan, where I have given lectures. In June 2002, I was invited by the Greek Orthodox Church to join a luxury cruise seminar tour on the Adriatic Sea, along with religious leaders and scientists from around the world. Symposiums were held in Greece, Albania, Montenegro, Slovenia, Croatia, Italy, and other ports of call. Called the International Symposium on Religion, Science, and the Environment, the event was being held for the fourth time. I had been invited just three months before the symposium by one of the organizers of the symposium, a Greek woman whose daughter had showed her the collection of crystal photographs. The emotions of the many people who saw the crystal photographs reached behind the individual and resulted in a flow of wonderment from one person to another that has now become a flowing river. There's another way to express the response to the water crystal books. It's as if the water crystals have brought moisture back to the dried up souls of those who live in the harsh conditions of modern society. They have replenished the brilliance of life to individuals and society. More than anything else, the photographs have succeeded in starting an enormous movement that is taking place among people around the world. <clears throat> 
The act of living is the act of flowing. If a dam is built in a river to stop its flow, the river will die. Likewise, if the flow of blood gets dammed up somewhere in our bodies, it will mean the end of life. The same is true for cities and countries. I was recently blessed with the opportunity to lecture to a large audience in Berlin. As you know, Berlin is a city that was once divided in two by a wall. <clears throat> I told the audience that just as water should remain free to flow, in no way should a city or country be divided. The splitting of Berlin in 1961 resulted in a great hardship, loss of homes, and loss of dreams. Then 28 years later, the wall was torn down, and like water allowed to flow freely, millions of people began to come and go of their own free will. The people emulated the flow of water, a principle of nature, and the reason is that people are mostly water. About 70% of our bodies are water. This is the case for adults of all races, and that is why people should not be divided by political strategies and ideologies. Just like water, people must always be allowed to flow freely. When I finished speaking to the audience, I noticed that a change had come over the hall. It was like a feeling spread over all of us. A wave of people stood up and started clapping. Their souls had been touched by my message, and the result was a wave of emotion that encompassed the hall, creating an ever larger wave that would expand to others. The desire for peace and prayers of love cannot be contained within borders. Differences in skin color or language are easily overcome when hearts resonate together, creating a new flowing wave. A small adventure beginning with a tiny little water crystal has spread to people all over the world, creating a growing movement. The water crystals have resonated with something pure and holy deep within the souls of the people who see the photographs. Hearts have been opened, and love, gratitude, and a hope for peace have spilled out, opening the way for a new adventure. Through this book and through these crystal photographs, I hope to convey the power of prayer. When water is exposed to certain expressions, you're cute, you're beautiful, love and gratitude, a beautiful crystal results when the water is frozen. What does this really mean for us? The thoughts in our hearts have an impact on all life and in the creation of our world tomorrow. A wondrous power resides within the human soul. We hear all the time that our actions are a result of our thoughts. And this principle is truly demonstrated in how water forms crystals according to what influences it has been exposed to. But the power to affect action with thought is a double-edged sword. If people desire to see the destruction of the world, then that is what will result. A lot has happened in our world since people have become aware of the water crystals. Gigantic buildings, symbols of civilization and prosperity, have collapsed before our eyes New wars have erupted. We have seen sadness give birth to anger, and anger create more sadness, creating a cycle that encompasses the world around us. Some people cry, some look down in despair, and some look up in prayer. We must use the power within us to keep our thoughts focused on the good around us and not on the forces of destruction. We are at a point in human history when we most need to rediscover some important truths that we have somehow forgotten. In fact, this might be our last chance, and this is the lesson that I feel water crystals are trying to teach us. My research into crystals began with the desire to get even one tiny step closer to understanding the universe, but that has now led to the evolution of a broad field of study for me. I have seen the effect that bright smiles of people throughout the world and expressions of emotion can have on the formation of beautiful crystals. But, you may ask, can world peace occur from mere water crystals? It is my desire to take the first step in that direction, and then one more, and then another, and on and on toward that end. As I continue my conversation with water, the crystals continue to teach me many lessons. The importance of living in tune with the rhythm of life and the flow of nature, leaving the earth beautiful for future generations, love and prayer, all of these various messages have been included in this book. I could be no happier than to find that it has had a positive influence on all those who have picked it up. Finally, I would like to express my appreciation to Beyond Words Publishing, my English language publisher of The Hidden Messages in Water and The True Power of Water. 
and all others who have helped in various ways, and also my staff at IHM who endured many hours in a refrigerated room taking pictures of crystals. Chapter 1 <clears throat> Tune in to the halo of happiness. What comes to mind when you think about happiness? Do you think about love coming true for you, perhaps the moment of birth of a son or a daughter, a job well done, or a time you remember lying in the green grass and gazing up at the blue sky? The answer is different for everyone. We all have our own image of what happiness is, but all of us want to live a life filled with happiness. I know of only one way to do this, and that is to align yourself with the halo of happiness. As I described in my book, The True Power of Water, Hato is the subtle energy that exists in all things. All that exists in the universe vibrates at a unique frequency, so if you emit a halo of happiness, then you can be sure that the universe will respond with happiness. What do you need to do to align yourself with the halo of happiness? Part of the problem is that it's hard to know what happiness really is. Perhaps there was a time when you thought you were happy, but then you realized that it was only an illusion. Or maybe you believed that a blissful relationship was finally within your reach, only to compare what you had with someone else and see your dream castle crumble in the sand and be washed away. On a trip to Germany, my daughter, who now lives in the Netherlands, told me about one of her friends who had lived in East Germany before the Berlin Wall came down. The construction of the Berlin Wall was a time of great sadness for the people of Germany, but my daughter's friend said that despite the city being divided, life on the east side of the wall went on basically as normal. In fact, a sense of contentment came from knowing that no one had to worry about what others were thinking because everyone was poor. But when the wall finally came down and the people in the eastern part of the city were now suddenly able to obtain everything that the western part of the city had to offer, problems began. The more new shiny things they saw, the more they wanted. But the Easterners were basically still poor, so the result was a lot of unsatisfied needs. Some even longed for the days before the wall came down when people were poor and prices low. It seemed as if the country had first been torn apart and then put back together, all without regard for the will of the people. Of course, the fall of the Berlin Wall is one of the most jubilant moments of modern history, but we have to admit that even this wonderful turning point had its repercussions. When we start to compare our happiness with that of others, we soon start resonating with the halo of unhappiness. As long as we search for happiness from the outside, then it's unlikely that true happiness can ever be found. Return to Bliss the search for happiness is ultimately and simply a search for self. You can go searching for it in distant lands, but you only find it in the palm of your hand. Think back far enough in your life, and you'll probably remember a time when you felt innocent bliss. Your life had meaning, and you were so busy living that time was forgotten. Then adulthood set in, and you put those things away and locked the door. Perhaps you have even forgotten where you put the key. But those happy feelings are not gone for good. With a little effort, you can open the door and take out those things that you thought were forever a part of your past. When you are true to yourself and search for what you really want to be and do, your life will once again begin to flow. In your job, in your play, and in your love, you need to return to the starting point to find the bliss. When you do this, you will soon realize that your life has changed. You'll first feel a renewed sense of health and well-being. This is because the bliss within you will purify the water that flows through your body. If we were to take a picture of such water, the resulting crystal would most certainly astound us. One treatment suggested for people with cancer is life purpose treatment. By finding a purpose in life, giving speeches, climbing a mountain, laughing, the immune system is revitalized and the cancer often goes into remission. It's now common knowledge in the medical community that your mind has an enormous impact on your body. Filling your body with the halo of bliss is the very best secret for living a healthy life. This state of bliss is also the key to expanding what we can do. We all know that if you enjoy something, then you usually excel at it. Yukio Funai, a famous business consultant in Japan who has provided advice to some 3,000 companies, advocates an effective method for strengthening the abilities of companies and individuals. 
He calls this method the strength development method and it simply involves focusing on the strengths of the company or the individual and working to expand those strengths. Weaknesses are not even considered. The result is that the strengths become stronger and the weaknesses take care of themselves. For example, if you run a store, it's easy to focus all your attention on how to move the products that aren't selling well. But most stores will have a product that's a strong seller. For a boutique, it may be a particular style of dress. If they can focus their attention on that dress, then sales of that product and other products as well will increase. For a business to succeed, it needs to focus on what is selling well, what's most effective, and what they do best. We see this concept reflected in the hydroponics method of growing vegetables, which makes it possible to harvest 10,000 tomatoes from a single tomato plant. <clears throat> How might you ask is such a thing possible? The answer is surprisingly simple. Create a good environment for growing tomatoes. Plants, of course, grow in soil, but with hydroponics farming, the roots grow in water infused with the nutrition that a plant requires. And because the plant doesn't need to use up energy to push its way through the soil, the roots can grow at will and easily find all the necessary nutrition. In this way, the tomato plant is able to take advantage of all its hidden potential. I remember visiting an experimental farm operated by agronomist Shigeo Nozawa, the inventor of the hydroponics method, a few years before he died and seeing the tomato plant he had grown. To put it lightly, I couldn't believe my eyes. The same thing applies to us as humans. When you find what you do best and realize that this is where you need to focus your attention, then you will be well on your way to returning to bliss. It won't be long before you sense that your life is undergoing a change. If you know someone, perhaps a child, who is focused on a sport or a certain aspect of study, then you need to provide nourishment in the form of encouragement and compliments. This will help the person become even more focused and more determined. A good illustration of what can result from the right words can be seen in the formation of water crystals. When water is exposed to the words, you have to do it, the result is never a well-formed crystal. This also goes for words like you fool, and the worst, it's no good. Perhaps it's time to take these words out of your vocabulary. Fill it instead with words like thank you, let's do it, I love you, beautiful, and well done. Make, those, make these warm and beautiful words the ones you use the most. The words that make beautiful crystals from the water that flows through your body are the words that fill you with a gentle feeling of peace, and that is when you will be able to expand on your abilities and go about each day with passion and bliss. In my previous book, I explained how we put cooked rice in three glass jars. Into one of the jars we said fool, to another we said thank you, and we simply ignored the rice in the third bottle. The rice that was told thank you fermented and had quite a nice fragrance. The rice that was told fool darkened and rotted. The rice that was ignored turned black and emitted a highly repugnant smell. However, that's not the end of the story. I took these same jars of rice to an elementary school and the students said thank you to the rice in all three containers. It wasn't long before the rice in all three containers fermented and started to emit a pleasant smell, even the rice that had spoiled. This indicates that even that which is dying and decaying can be brought back to life by caring attention, kind words, and positive thoughts. Shinichiro Tureyama, a former director of the Japan Holistic Medical Society, is a testament to this. Tureyama spent his career as an impassioned businessman, and before that he had kidney cancer. He started making it a habit to wake up early and go to the rooftop of his condominium to greet the rising sun. As he watched the morning sun each day, he began to realize that life is a gift and the words thank you started coming out of his mouth. Without turning his eyes from his cancer, he instead spoke words of appreciation to the cells and the result was that they began to recover. The cancer receded until he was declared cured. The ability of the spoken word to give life is much more powerful than we can imagine. <clears throat> a 
a ten-year-old girl conducted an experiment similar to the rice experiment but instead used sunflower seeds on the seed envelope the flower pots and the watering can she wrote the words thank you for one and fool for the other and then she spoke these words to the respective seeds as she took care of them each day the plant exposed to thank you grew tall with full lush leaves in sharp contrast the plant exposed to fool had a deformed stem and wrinkled leaves when we looked at the plants through a microscope we saw that the leaves of the plant exposed to thank you were dense while the other plant had leaves that appeared weak and frail this may well indicate the presence of consciousness in plants accounting for the striking difference in the two plants raised by the young girl i learned about this experiment when the mother of the young girl wrote me a letter which she ended with a question what would happen if the same thing applied to raising children one way to look at words is to consider them the switch for turning on or off the vibration of everything in the universe or perhaps words can be thought of as a remote control that has the power to reach anywhere humans are the only animals capable of using words and this allows us to align our wavelength with anything and everything that exists in the universe and it's instantaneous our words and our thoughts can go anywhere and to everyone in the instant they come forth experiences of unexplainable coincidences are too common to be ignored perhaps you have dreamed about someone and later found out that they had died perhaps you thought about someone from your past and then you get a call from that person it's happened to all of us and the cause of this phenomenon can be found in the vibration of thoughts I once conducted the following experiment. I filled a jar with plain water from the tap at my office in Tokyo, and then I put it on my desk. Since the water came from the city waterworks system and contained chlorine, attempts to make crystals from the water failed. I then asked for the help of 500 people located throughout Japan. At the same time, on the appointed day, they all sent positive thoughts to purify the water on my desk and then sent the message, thank you, to the water. As expected, the water changed and was able to form beautiful crystals. The chlorinated water from the tap had changed to pure water. How could this have happened? I think you know the answer. The thoughts and words of 500 people reached the water without regard for the borders of time and space. And in the same way, the vibration of your thoughts at this very moment is having a certain effect on the world. If you understand this, then you can also understand that you already hold in your hands all the keys you need to change your life. There is value in unhappiness. We can learn another thing about happiness from the perspective of Hato. Life is not all happiness. As long as there is life, there will be sadness. All our high hopes can be easily deflated, but another way to look at this is to realize that unhappiness is the path on the way to happiness we exposed water to the words happiness and unhappiness as expected the water exposed to happiness formed beautiful round crystals that would make a precious ring but what about crystals formed from water exposed to unhappiness we expected to find deformed and broken crystals but the crystals were rather beautiful hexagonal crystals that looked like they had been cut in half it looked as if the water was trying its best to form crystals. It would seem then that unhappiness is not really the opposite of happiness. Unhappiness, in fact, is the process required for the creation of happiness. Happiness and unhappiness are like two ends of the same rope, and sometimes you hold one end of the rope and everything goes your way, and other times you have the other end of the rope and nothing goes your way. Such is life. We all want to be happy every day and never have to experience sadness. How unnatural that would be. Like the waves that rise and fall, if water never falls, then it could never rise or flow ahead. For every happiness in life, there is another side. When you're in love, every day is filled with anticipation and joy, but accommodating another person in your life may require that you sacrifice your free time, your money, and your space. And you can almost be sure that after a fight, you'll find yourself thinking that you'd be better off alone. The elation felt when you buy the car of your dreams seldom lasts as long as the car. Each new scratch in the paint and each time you fork out money to maintain the car will chip away at your initial happiness. You can never own only one side of a coin. If you want to find happiness, then you have to be ready to accept what comes with it. 
such is the fate of all those who live in this world but we can still have hope and look forward to the future in fact do you think you would be able to have hope if everything went exactly as you wanted it to your ability to be happy no matter what and no matter when depends entirely on what's going on in your heart a thankful heart is the way to happiness why do people go through life looking for happiness dogs and cats look for food and comfort but they certainly don't go to all the trouble that people do in their continual search for happiness i suppose the reason is that we are the only ones who can align ourselves with the halo of happiness many years ago i had a discussion with dr ravi batra a well-known international economist and he said something that has struck with me that has stuck with me why do you think people continually search for happiness the reason is because we people have a link to unlimited existence but many of us make a serious mistake we set up conditions for happiness based on riches and fame momentary pleasures and things that are limited and always changing <clears throat> there are those who are rich beyond most of our imaginations and yet they continue to want more as they strive in vain to find happiness the reason it's in vain is because they are looking to find unlimited happiness and limited money and riches unless we can become one with the unlimited existence we will never find true happiness this requires that we raise our consciousness all that can be seen with the human eye is of this limited world sooner or later the material trappings will end and as long as that is how we define happiness our hearts will always feel hollow of course i understand that casting aside all desire is not possible or even advisable in fact desire is not what's preventing us from finding happiness an appropriate amount of desire is needed to make people strive for something better and it's what made it possible for human society to rise to its current level the problem arises when we become slaves to our desires our modern society operates on the ability to stir up desire in the masses it's no easy task to find happiness in a society established on insatiable desire so what is it that we need to do to escape never-ending desire and find happiness the answer is to have a thankful heart more than ever we live in a time when love and appreciation is truly needed and I think the right ratio for appreciation and love is two to one, the exact ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in the H2O molecule. We have seen where words of appreciation and love result in crystals of indescribable beauty. There are no conditions needed for appreciation. We can be thankful for life and for our freedom to move about. When you align your soul with the halo of appreciation and love, a small drop of happiness will seep into your heart and spread throughout your body this will link you to the vibration of happiness and happiness will become a part of your daily life and this is the secret for finding happiness right now wherever you are the invisible world of Hado. water crystals are just one aspect or face of the universe water changes its appearance at will as it attempts to speak to us concerning the formation of the cosmos it is in itself a temporary world formed within a severe environment we can peer into this temporary world when we photograph crystals to take the photographs we collect water and place drops in 50 petri dishes we then freeze them at minus 25 degrees centigrade and let them cool for two and a half hours during which time they form tiny round clumps of ice we then peer at the ice at five degrees below zero at a magnification of 200 times the crystals appear for only two minutes under the microscope during that time the tiny water crystals form hexagonal patterns and then melt just as quickly as they appear in just a few precious moments the door to a new dimension is opened giving us a glimpse into a fantasy world people who see photographs of these crystals are fascinated by their wondrous beauty like the kaleidoscope that we remember looking into as a child we are suddenly carried away into another world if only for a brief moment this world we enter is the invisible world of vibration or hato three key words are helpful to understand hato the first is frequency the entire universe is vibrating at a particular and unique frequency frequency can be modeled as waves Elwood. Uh, 
the first is frequency. The entire universe is vibrating at a particular and unique frequency. Frequency can be modeled as waves, a fact easily supported by quantum mechanics. All matter is frequency as well as particles. What this means is that rather than considering something a living organism or a mineral, something we can touch or something we can see, everything is vibrating and vibrating at a unique and individual frequency. But that is still not all. For the words we speak, the words we write, paintings and photographs all emit their own frequencies as well. You may have heard of blind people who are able to see colors. When they hold something in their hands, they are able to feel the color. They know if something is a warm color or a cool color, a strong color or a pale color. Similar to how we feel the temperature and texture of an object, these people are able to feel the color through their skin. They are receptive to the unique frequency emitted by different colors. The same applies to written words. People with psychic powers reportedly can read a word by touching it while their eyes are closed, and some say they can read letters still sealed in an envelope. If you consider the concept of Hado, you might consider that there is the possibility of this being more than a par parlor trick. But why would the formation of crystals be affected by a word written on a piece of paper and placed around a beaker of water for a few hours, or a photograph placed under a beaker for 24 hours? The answer, I believe, is that water is capable of feeling Hado from the source and memorizing it. The second word helpful in understanding Hado is resonance. Resonance is made possible when there is a sender of Hado information and a receiver of the information. Say you make a call to someone you want to talk to. Unless that person picks up the receiver, there will be no conversation. Without a receiver, information cannot be sent. A Japanese expression, on no kokyu, or in-breath and out-breath, means a state where subtle synchronization occurs when we do things together. This also refers to a relationship between a sender and a receiver. When there is a match in vibrations, resonance occurs. We can observe the phenomenon of resonance in various aspects of daily life. For example, if you have feelings of hatred towards someone, there is a good chance that this person feels the same way about you. Likewise, if you have positive feelings towards someone, that person will sense those feelings even if you don't express them in words. What we feel in our hearts has a strange way of being relayed to other people. The third word helpful for understanding Hado is similarity. The macro world we know is a symbol, an expansion of the micro world. The nine rotating planets in our solar system are the macro version of the electrons circulating around the atomic nucleus, and what is going on within the human body is a miniaturization of what is going on in the grandeur of nature. We can also say that this is an aspect of the fractal theory. When you look at a tree, you can see that the tips of the branches divide and spread out much in the same way that the first branches of the tree divide and spread out. In other words, because the tree is formed in the same way as the branches, the tree forms a single silhouette, which is sometimes called a fractal structure. The fractal structure can be seen in various aspects of nature in the ocean coast, in the churning of a river, and in the formation of clouds. This is also the case with water crystals. Why do water crystals form hexagonal shapes? When the molecules of water join together, the hexagonal shape is the most stable. Of course, such he hexagonal structures are too small to see, but when these small structures join together, they form a larger hexagonal shape. In other words, the placement of molecules too small to see and the formation of crystals that we can see through our microscopes are in compliance with the fractal structure. So by observing the micro world, we can increase our understanding of the macro world. Likewise, by observing macro phenomenon, we can learn more about the micro world. These three keywords, frequency, resonance, and similarity, will give you a better understanding of Hado. Another important aspect of Hado is flow. The Buddha, knowing that flow is a fundamental principle of the universe, said that all things are in flux and nothing is permanent. 
Water is a good example of this. Water is always flowing with life, purifying what it encounters as it travels. It carries with it the nourishment necessary for sustaining life while also carrying away impurities, giving life to all. All life flows with the flow of water. Even your life is in constant flow of water. In fact, even the cycle of birth and death complies with this single principle. Circulation is indeed the law of nature. But there is one form of life that insists on breaking this law of nature. Humankind. The desire for more, pride, and the insistence of one ideology over another all serve to block the flow. This is the cause of many of the problems that we find ourselves facing in these troubled times. War that begets greed, tragedy that begets loathing, pollution that begets apathy. These are, these are distortions or blockages of the natural ways of nature. Many of the problems that we have not even started to solve require careful resolve and bold action. And what will be necessary for us to arrive at solutions? The answer is circulation. This is the key that we need to open the floodgates to a new day for the human race, finding happiness, spreading love, restoring peace, and protecting this jewel called Earth. It all begins with circulation, and it is water that will show us the way. I invite you to begin the journey.